Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. You guys know that I love to start the day out with something exciting. Well, sure enough, my girl here, the Europlanes frimbriata, this unbelievably alien-looking leaf-tailed gecko, actually laid a little egg right over here on the leaf. You can barely see it over there. Now, it doesn't look great in the sense that it's not completely round, but it is hard, so there's a chance that it could potentially be okay. Now, the biggest thing is, is I don't want to rip that egg off and crack the egg, so what I think I'm going to have to do is actually snip off right around this leaf and around this leaf and set it up and hopefully it's good. Now what's interesting is most of the time geckos like her will lay two eggs but she has consistently been laying one egg and I don't really know why. Now the first two eggs she did lay haven't been fertile unfortunately so we're going to have to take a look and see if she actually gets any better here. Now it could be a male issue. We don't know. We're thinking about getting another male for her. Nevertheless she is so cool and we're going to go ahead and see if we can do a little surgery on this egg right here. And like I said, I'm just gonna just really eat, simply snip away right here. And I'll snip the other side just so that it frees that egg up off of there. And now I can see if it's over here. Ugh. Now I've got that egg freed up right there. What I'll probably do is the same thing here is maybe just snip this leaf away a little bit right there just to see if I can't somehow get that egg off. Let's see. So let me see if I can get around here or if I have to cut this whole leaf off, which I think I might have to do. Whoop. Oh. Just gonna go ahead and snip this away right here. Now I've got the egg right there. And like I said, the egg doesn't look all that good and I have a feeling it's probably not fertile, but I'm gonna give it the best shot I am. Now this is how you wanna set up the eggs right here. We'll have hatch right in there, a little bit of sphagnum moss that keeps the dampness, and then we have this little cap with a little dry, perlite in there right like that and we'll just place that egg right on that because what you want is you want the humidity from the sphagnum moss and the hatch right but you want it to be dry on this we'll just cap this off right here now these guys take like forever to hatch so we won't know if this egg is fertile for any time i can candle it and see but it's probably going to take me a week or two before you really see any network as a vein or anything like that so fingers crossed maybe eventually we're going to hatch some euro platys for embryatus but we'll have to wait to see regardless either way it is awesome to start the day out getting some eggs not always fun keeping animals I can tell you that much and Butterscotch's cage uh, is a little destroyed right now she uh, she messed it up she shed she's all over the place and unfortunately Andrea I know you love this cage because we have to <laughs> climb inside of it right lucky ass <laughs> that's the downside too we've been considering moving Butterscotch lower but I'm not 100% sure if we're gonna do that or not so we have to literally just open this cage up get her out which is a challenge in itself and then uh, climb in there and clean her up Butterscotch are you gonna be in a good mood today she's a really good girl but she's definitely a little food aggressive so as soon as she knows I'm not food she's actually pretty good so there you go girl there you go sweetie but being that she's high energy she can definitely be a challenge to get out of the cage at times there you go sweetie there you go she is a beautiful snake though isn't she okay girl all right there you go there you go Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh gosh. There we go. Oh, she's got my leg. Oh gosh. She's got me wrapped tight. Okay, here we go. Woo! Alright. That was the easy part. Now the hard part. Butterscotch's cage is all cleaned. We're gonna get her back in, but before I put her back in, I've been really making a concerted effort to handle her a lot because she's a really tame snake. She's never even struck at anyone except for food, but she's a runner. She loves to kind of run, 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 run. So I really think that Butterscotch is eventually gonna be one of my big animal ambassadors when she's 17, 18 foot. But that means I have to handle her a lot to get her more habituated to handling because trust me, she is a handful. So let's just go ahead and spend some time with her. And 
and there it is. I mean, what an absolutely gorgeous snake. And she was actually really good today, so she's calming down a lot. And you might know that I sometimes spin into things. So if a big snake is kind of going away, you can almost think of like a fork on spaghetti. You wind it back around the fork, right? So I'll spin into where she's going, and it kind of gets her around my body. She has absolutely made huge strides, and what an absolutely gorgeous animal. Well, you remember the other day when I said I was doing really well when it comes to egg binding? Well, sure enough, we found a female that I didn't see an egg that was still in. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this egg out because it's not right by the vent, but I'm going to do my absolute best. And I'm going to do the same procedure that I always do, taking a surgical probe like this that has a really dull end. And I'm just going to try to just gently massage that egg down towards the vent. And then I'm going to get the vent and I'm going to see if I can't find that egg. And again, I don't know if I'll be able to find the egg or not, or if the overduct is folded. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I'm going to do my absolute best here to try to find it. It looks like I can see it right there. And I'm just using a circular pattern to kind of get that overduct around the egg as I gently push out. Again, you can see the overduct is trying to fold over it. So what I have to do is just kind of slowly get the egg like this starting to come. It's starting to come out. I can see it right there and I just got to continue to just circle around like this until that egg comes. Here he comes. It's coming out. Yep, good. There doesn't seem to be any tears or anything in the overduct, which is good. And again, I'll just continue that circular pattern until it gets out. And there it comes out right there. All right. Fantastic. There's the egg I was talking about. And again, this girl had it in here. Now, if that would have gotten stuck, what basically happens, this egg can dry up and adhere to the overduct wall, and then it won't actually push out even if she wants to. So it is kind of important if you can aspirate that egg out. Although I really want to beg you guys to not do this unless you've been with someone that's done this. I've been doing aspirating eggs for 30 years, so I know it. So you could really injure an animal if you go in with the probe and actually pierce the overduct or anything like that. So don't do it unless you you know someone that is but it is important and the fact that we got this egg out right here really saved this girl's life or potentially saved her life so now let's hope there's no more egg binding this year I always mention that some of the coolest things I get to do in the course of a day is hang out with my tortoises I mean look at Matilda there she's such an awesome animal and of course my little leopard tortoises I absolutely love these guys and one of the things I've been talking about adding to the vlog a little bit maybe every couple weeks or something like that I'm not gonna overdo it is uh you know we're a huge community you know I love you guys so I want to be able to answer your questions recently we kind of asked you to go ahead and send in some questions I want to start with this one hey there Brian this is Fran your friend from across the pond from Frankie's Aquatics and I'd like to ask you a quick question for your vlog today so as you know I've followed your channel for many years now and I've, I've experienced and shared some of your ultimate highs for example cutting the scaleless ball python eggs and unfortunately we've witnessed some terrible lows too another example when you lost your snake sunshine my question for you today is, what has been your ultimate high? What has kept you going when really you felt like you want to quit inside? What's kept your passion? What's kept your drive? Thank you very much for being an absolute inspiration here on YouTube and I wish you all the best for you and your BHB family in the future. First off, thanks for that amazing question. And by the way, yeah, I mean, that's some pretty awesome editing skills you got there. Regardless, the truth is, guys, I try to take the highs and lows out as much as possible. It's really easy when things are going really well or you get an awesome clutch or you get something really amazing to be like really high and be really excited. And then when something bad happens, it's easy to get really low. If you can kind of take the highs and lows out as much as you can, and trust me, I talk about this all the time. You know, people go to the gym to lift weights to get their body in shape. You need to do the same thing with your mental health. You need to actually put a lot of energy into that mental health. And that's something I try to do each and every day. The other thing I do is try to surround myself with really positive, upbeat people. Uh, none better than, of course, these two monkeys right here. I mean, how can you be in a bad mood or something when you've got these two guys around? The question was, how do you deal with the fact when things are going really well and then maybe potentially go bad? How do you keep happy and positive? Well, the key to that is you, if, if you're happy during the lowest points of your life, then you can even you you can even be like you can be so positive during the like high times. You know Dang. what I mean? So like you gotta learn from your losses. Okay, don't take them and be like, oh, I'm so sad. Take that loss, analyze it, really pick it apart, and then it will tell you how to win next time. I just bury it deep down inside. Just just cover it up. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it. Bury it down below the uh, seven and a half tacos you can eat. Yeah, that's right. Because we all know you can't eat more than seven and a half tacos. You know? Numbers, 
<laughs> but, but honestly, guys, dead serious, I do try to surround myself with really great people that can kind of keep me on an even keel. And uh, and I've just learned to live with the ups and downs of life, business, all the other things. And uh, with you guys, uh, it makes it really easy. Take a look at this bold Mac Snow right here. That thing is so clean, it's crazy. And I'm not gonna lie to you, Jessica is off today, and I was looking through these, and I was just blown away. But I don't even know what some of these are. I'm not as in tune with gecko morphs as I am with a lot of animals. I look at this thing and I think, what the heck is it? I mean, I know it's a Mac Snow, but look at that crazy pattern. I mean, that thing is absolutely ridiculous. Again, I'm sure there's some genetics behind it that Jessica just probably knows better than I do. Look at this one too. This is actually a bell albino, but that pattern is ridiculous. It's kind of a bold stripe, but it's also a little bit patternless. So I don't know if there's some eclipse in there or not. Regardless, I did want to get back to the Q&A. Hey, this is my Q&A for Brian. I was wondering, why are you coming out to Utah? I live out in Utah and I love watching your videos and I was just curious, what are you coming out to Utah for? Beautiful city, not much to do, but just curious. I'm continuing to just marvel at these geckos. What in the world is that? Of course, it's a Mac Bold, but regardless, I am coming out to Utah here within the next month for sure. We're going to be at Sequest in Salt Lake City, and we're just going to be hanging out doing some really cool vlog stuff, some other things like that. And then I definitely have to hit some cool park when I'm there. I'm not sure if I'm going to hit Arches or Zion or whatever. I'm not 100% sure. As a matter of fact, uh, I'll have a question for you. What park should I go to when I'm close to Salt Lake City? I'm only going to have like a day or so to do it but yes i am coming out there definitely stay in touch we will be at sea quest for sure so if you want to come out and hang out with us we'd absolutely love to see you there and back to geckos continuing on with a crazy max snow bold animal this has to be a white and yellow but oh my god what a gorgeous little monkey and I could sit here all day and look at these geckos. They're insane. This is one, I'll be honest, I don't know what the pairing is. I didn't look at the records, but I, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's just really ridiculous. And we're just starting to hatch geckos. So over the next couple of months, whoo doggy, we're gonna have some beauties. So let me know down in the comments if you guys like the idea of doing Q and A's every now and then. And if you want me to highlight a question that you have, go ahead and send them over to at Jay Tomsky on Instagram. What's up, Eric? Another busy day today? Yep, super busy day today, of course, going through, cleaning everything. Thing, checking on everyone that I'm gonna come back see him again feed them uh, lots to do I can see you have a, a, a load of rodents over here so that's part of the deal here guys I mean it's uh I always tell people it's like painting a bridge right you get to the end you come back you paint again right yeah that's right that's true so, so feed and then the good news is is that after you're done feeding that turns into poop and yes you have to clean it you know what that's job security 101 <laughs> Sorry, I'll let you get to it thank you In the dungeon, what do we have today, Kelsey? Today we have a xanthic female bred to a dragonfly male. Awesome, this is an amazing female. I actually showed you this girl the other day. She's a VPIA xanthic. I love this animal. I know you love this animal too. I do. <laughs> I know you do, so I know you're excited. Let's see what she has. All right, ah, oh, looks like a good clutch too. Look at that. Oh, there we go. Whoop. Ooh, that's kind of a weird egg, huh? That's a weird boob egg. Yeah, it's that's on the a wrong really, egg. yeah, it's all over the place. But ironically enough, I can see there's some discoloration in here where there's some veinage. So this does look like a good egg. Will it hatch? I'm not 100% sure, but it does look like some of the eggs are rolled a little bit and they look like they're really fresh, so they haven't really adhered together really well. So we'll candle them just to make sure, but that is a really beautiful clutch of eggs right there. Job, what do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Nine. Nine eggs, not bad. Like I said, this one's a little bit goofy, but it still looks like it's gonna hatch. Again, that's gonna be really cool. I love axanthic stuff. We need to get more axanthic stuff because I know it's one of Kelsey's favorites. So uh, that's all we have for ball python eggs today. Good job as always, Kelsey. Thank you. Real quick break from the vlog to open up something that uh, says, open on the vlog please so i have no idea what it is but we're going to go ahead and open on the vlog and hopefully it's something good you think it's a piece of gold or something i don't know it, it's some kind of bottle of something oh what do we got well at least it's taped shot so that's good dechlorinate dechlorinate for the fish Le tank leave-in conditioner 
Removes yellow from gray hair. <laughs> what? What is this? What is this for? Is this this for can't. You? This better not be for me. What are you? <laughs> what is it? So it's called dechlorinate. It's uh, obviously an uh, some. You leave it in your hair and it removes the gray, reverses effect of gray hair. Uh, and this is from Andy. Thank you, Andy. My dad works for really hard for this product called Dechlorinate. Uh, so obviously it's your dad. He's a hairdresser in North Carolina oh and has been selling it in his saloon. And uh, I guess, I don't know what you're trying to tell me. These are highlights. This is, and you know what? They're gonna be dechlorinated. He's gonna try this and then it's really gonna shine. All right, so yeah. <laughs> so if next week I look like 20 years younger, you know that this no, product is No, you're gonna look well. 20 years older. It's gonna be Snow White. Snow well, uh, thank you, Andy. I appreciate that. Uh, I, I, I'm going to take this as a compliment that you're trying to help me. But uh, yes. I, I do appreciate your dad being an entrepreneur <laughs> trying to push the product. Thank you for sending it to me, and uh, oh, I'll keep you guys God. updated on it. I think Lori's having too much fun with this one. <laughs> Always trying to improve over here at the Reptarium. And I know it's little silly things. I showed you guys this with the CR codes and stuff like that. But one of the problems was is that on the screen cages, we couldn't put the stickers. So we ended up making these plates right here, and we just added them to the Abronia cages. And to all the chameleon cages. But I will tell you something, you know, Adam, I'm all proud. I'm like, look at this, Lori, how awesome is that? Carbo's over here, are fantastic. And then when the zoo was open, Lori mentioned that the veiled chameleon and the Jackson's chameleon looked a little bit off. That's right. I put the veil chameleon on the Jackson's cage and the Jackson's on the veil cage. So uh, I was so proud of my work and as it was, I screwed it up. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and change those out. Call it a day. Wish you guys an amazing day. Tell you how much I love your support. Be kind to someone and I promise I will see you tomorrow.